Hello, everyone. Good morning. Buenos dias. So what privilege to be here in front of all of you. And thank you to the World Happiness Week and the World Happiness Foundation for this opportunity to share my story, my journey, and give you a glimpse of what a picture-perfect introduction looks like. But before we get started, let's kick it off with a two-minute mindfulness practice for creativity. This two-minute practice is designed to stimulate our creativity. Consciously preparing ourselves for the process of creating can make the time more engaging and productive. Research shows that once the parameters of a problem or challenge are defined, creativity flourishes when our minds are less directed, more open, and curious. This research-backed attention practice of open monitoring has been shown to prime our brain for creativity. I invite you to participate to the extent that you feel comfortable. And let's start by moving a bit to find more comfort. And either allow your eyes to look down at 45 degrees or out of a window if you'd like. And taking a deep breath in and out. And now notice the sounds where you are, the sounds of my voice, maybe a humming or more distant voices. And see what it's like to just allow the sounds to happen, to be heard. And now notice your thoughts. Like sounds, they are just happening. Bring a curiosity to the thoughts, not trying to get anything. Allow your attention to be open to whatever appears. And this openness allows creativity to arise. And as we come to the end of this two minute practice, how would it be to bring an open, curious and playful attitude, not just to your own ideas, but to those of the rest of the group? Allow your eyes to gently open and refocus. Let's finish with a deep breath in and out. Awesome. This is just what we need for kicking off our session today about picture perfect introduction. I'll be giving you a glimpse of what a picture perfect introduction looks like, what my journey has been, and encourage each of you to create your own. And I'm always here, just a message away. So when you think about mindfulness, I love this quote by Sharon Salzberg. Mindfulness isn't difficult. We just need to remember to do it. I have leveraged mindfulness, especially the Wise at Work meeting starters, which are just two minutes of mindfulness, but it sets you up for success in the right way. It gives you the context that you need. It gives you the focus that you need, and it puts you in a good mood. So let's kick it off and see what picture perfect introduction really is. To start off, I wanted to share my own picture perfect introduction, the latest edition of March, 2022. I had started this journey about a couple of years ago and every time I create it, it has a new story, it has a new visual, it has elements that have stayed for long and then there are elements that come and go. Hi everyone, hola, my name is Dev Manikam and I am a mindful soul and a believer in simplicity. There are three core values in my life. Inspire, it's all about building trust and credibility, making sure that we together are focused on helping each other and building that trust. Influence is all about extreme ownership. This is where I look at owning the good, the bad and the ugly. And impact has always been about results and relationships. We are in it together and we win or lose together. Knowing these core values has helped me ground myself, has helped me make the decisions in my life and at work, and it's also shaped who I am. 
there are three topics that have been important to me in the past few years. Stress and anxiety, which led me to discover mindfulness and essentialism, and diversity and belonging. As you'll see throughout the presentation today, I am a big fan of photography, um, especially flowers. So you will see them embedded throughout the presentation. And if you would like to access any of those, they're all on Unsplash. I recently published two books, uh, Broken Teacup, Filling the Cracks with Mindfulness, Essentialism and Self-Care, which is my journey through stress and anxiety without any medication and being able to heal with the support of communities, World Happiness Foundation being one of them, Fearless being another one of uh, the communities that I was part of, and being able to recover and help others to uh, heal together has been my promise for myself. And then this year, I also published my book, Fearless, Be the Authentic Leader You Will Follow. This book has been about focusing on being the authentic leader that you want to be. Knowing that I had a really good authentic leader, I knew what kind of a leader I wanted to be, how I can shape and bring change, how I can question the status quo and still know that I'm doing the right thing. These are all great ways uh, that have helped me. And as you can see, spring is around the corner. These are all flowers as of March, 2022. And, um, uh, you'll see throughout the presentation that my picture perfect introduction started off with a few elements and then it morphed into something else. So let's dive in. There's this quote, <laughs> the a picture says a uh, thousand words, um, speaks a thousand words. So let's drive drown or walk down memory lane to see what does that evolution look like. And here we are fast uh, going back in to 2018, 2019, around that time when I heard about this idea of uh, a, an introduction with visuals, just photos to tell who you are without any words. I love the idea and I thought, okay, this is something that I wanna take forward. And so I started creating my own. Um, and then today there are about, uh, at least that I know personally about 50 or so that, uh, folks that I have inspired to create their own picture perfect introductions with teams, with mentees, and with just uh, people that I've connected with throughout my uh, career and my life. So, this is how I first started my picture perfect. And this was in 2019, where I wanted to share everything about me from motivational quotes. So you'll see the quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right by Henry Ford. I wanted to share my travel wall, which you're seeing right behind me. I am um, actually excited to be able to travel again in uh, tomorrow to India uh, to visit my parents and my sister. So I started off initially with what's important for me. So travel and my explorations places that I got to see, food that I got to try, flowers again, um, are all part of what's on the right side. I was fortunate to travel around uh, 30 countries and 74 cities um, as of 2020. And I'm hoping that uh, one day I'll be able to explore more. I shared what my continuous learning is because I believe that as an individual, if I'm not learning, then um, I'm not doing a good job at for my own growth. So I try to continuously learn. And most recently I've been uh, trying to learn Spanish. And so I try to uh, bring the opportunity when possible. And then my career has always been about winning together. This is uh, all of my experiences that I've had around that time. And some of the organizations that I have been part of. Then the picture perfect uh, started becoming a part of the interviews. It became a part of conversations that I was having. And I realized that my picture perfect started evolving. So what you saw before got cleaned up a little bit and then it um, became a little bit more condensed with a fewer images, uh, but still the central story holding true. I use this picture perfect introduction for my interviews 
it was a nice way to get to know the hiring manager. It was a nice way to, for the hiring manager to get to know me. And I saw this as an opportunity to bring the simplicity aspect. Now, I believe in simplicity and that's why I think that's an important element. Now, depending on what kind of questions you're getting, some my, my interview with uh, Bumi, uh, we actually bonded over our travel places uh, with my hiring manager. Um, one of my conversations was about the macarons. So it depends on what they're interested in and you can actually have an interesting conversation. Uh, we have also had conversations around uh, places or motivational quotes. Um, the San Francisco heart is one that I've seen which I've been a heart collector uh, in San Francisco, any place that I can find it. And this is one by Yoda where it says, do or do not, there is no try. And I truly believe in that today. So my picture perfect started evolving. So when I shared my picture perfect with uh, different teams and my hiring managers, we started connecting on different levels. Even one conversation that I had was about flowers and I, um, and the manager said that she had worked in the company for about 25 years, but nobody in the company knows that she actually takes photos of flowers and draws them. Um, and I felt really touched. I thought this was an amazing way to connect with an individual uh, outside of the job title and outside the role. And I felt really privileged to have got to know um, uh, the hiring manager at that level. Uh, and this was my experience at Lenovo. So my, when I joined the team, I wanted to leverage the picture perfect concept and also showcase what are my um, experiences and what communities are also part of who I am, uh, my family uh, story, and continue to build on the explore, discover, uh, travel uh, experiences as well. So you'll see how it morphed from uh, text and images to now mostly images and very few texts, right? So this became part of my story. I enhanced my continuous learning with Duolingo because I was learning Spanish there. I also brought in Goodreads because I've been reading books uh, um, more than I've ever imagined in my own life, um, where I think in 2020, 2021, I had a target for a hundred books uh, to read in a year. And I believe that those are all things that have helped shape who I am today. My family, my parents live in India, my sister lives in the UK and my brother lives in Saudi Arabia and I'm here in the US. So I like to believe that my family is around the world and I have actually uh, extended families with my true friends, with my communities. And this has been a true opportunity for me to redefine what family really means to me. Um, for me, the World Happiness Foundation is just as family as my own family is. Um, same as the case with my Peerless Symphony family and uh, the other organizations like the Product Marketing Alliance, Women in APIs, they've always been, all been there through the past few years as I was learning and discovering who I am. So I talked about simplicity and these are two quotes that I hold very close to my heart because I think it um, helps articulate a very important point. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And so I actually wanted to take this idea to heart and I realized that simplicity is key. Whether you're mastering the art of storytelling um, or you're trying to actually test what's working. This is a great way to see, is this captivating enough for the audience? Are they uh, engaged? Are they understanding and showing curiosity? You can also bring what makes it truly me because that's an important question to ask, right? It became a fun exercise for my team to learn more about each other. Um, when I shared mine with my team at Lenovo, they got really excited and it encouraged them to uh, create their own. So I had a team of 25 around uh, the globe, uh, North America, EMEA, Asia Pacific, and Latin America. And this gave us a chance to get to know each other. And I've even had folks tell me, hey, I've worked with this person for over five years. And this is the first time I knew that they had interest in this specific uh, hobby or that we all like the same food or whatever it was, right? And it, it opened up on a conversation 
Um, and it also made me realize why I was calling it the picture perfect introduction, um, because does it have to be perfect? Are we trying to define ourselves in a perfect world or maybe there is perfection and imperfection, right? So that's when I realized that was my story that it wasn't so much about having a visual slide or a narrative or a pitch. It was more about understanding what did I want the world to know about me and how did I tell that story? That I think became a core of uh, putting, the, putting the guardrails in and putting the foundation for it together. So my picture perfect started evolving um, at the uh, women in APIs. We, as part of the, the smaller group uh, amongst the API leaders had a chance to um, be a co-facilitator for a speaking cohort where we are encouraging women um, to actually speak at API conferences and share their um, perspectives and be a voice in the, in the space. And as part of that, we had an exercise to reach out to our coworkers, our teams, our managers, and actually ask for three to five words to describe who you are. And when I reached out to my team, I thought, okay, if I reach out to at least 10 or 15 people, I'll get at least five or seven. But I ended up having everybody um, respond, which was very encouraging. And I realized that my, um, so which is what you're seeing in the middle of the butterfly, because I represent myself as a butterfly. Um, I wanted to visually uh, put that in a word cloud and there are tools like word art, which allows you to choose a shape or, um, uh, or an, an example that will represent you. Uh, for me, it was the butterfly. And then these were the words that popped up. So calm, kind, uh, open, positive, creative, motivated, trust, like all of these things started bubbling up. And I, I realized that there were some words in here that I didn't really think of, of myself, like ambitious or um, examples like um, pragmatic, things like that. But it was definitely encouraging to see this. And it also made me realize that it's a good exercise, personal branding exercise. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to take a few minutes, reach out to folks you know, um, and see what you, uh, what you receive, right? There may be words in here that you're like, yep, that's totally me. Or there may be words in here that you're like, hmm, never thought I of me in that light, but this is good to know. Now, these are all perspectives that you can bring forward and take the time to assess yourself, right? Um, at the end of the day, we are here as leaders to empower each other, to empower our teams, to empower our communities. And it's up to us to shape how we want our um, universe and our world to be. So my picture perfect started evolving. Um, I also wanted to bring Raleigh in. And this was a beautiful um, uh, sign art that they had in different uh, neighborhoods, in different um, uh, near different houses where they are welcoming everybody to Raleigh. And Ra welcome to Raleigh, y'all, is uh, a statement. Uh, and it says, Raleigh welcomes you no matter who you are. This, I think, helped me feel at home and feel welcomed um, in a new city. I'd moved to Raleigh in June 2020. And I'll be completing two years in a couple of months, which is very exciting. And then as my picture perfect, so this was May 2021, so you'll see there's a progression, it keeps evolving. And then I started realizing that maybe I was putting too much in there. Maybe I was telling a lot of things. And so you'll see that I've removed all of my past history uh, with all the education that I had, all the jobs that I had. And I started keeping it to what is my current state? Who am I now? Um, or who do I want to be now? And so from May, you'll see the difference here, right? From May, where I had just the organizations that I'm part of, at that moment in time to June, I started including some more motivational quotes and I started seeing that it started getting a little too busy, a little too much. Um, I also started bringing in uh, books from Goodreads, at least for that month uh, that I found very interesting. Uh, Into the Magic Shop is a book that I just um, had read at that time by Dr. James Doty, um, another expert in the compassion um, and mindfulness arena. Um, I had read Reed Hastings' book on No Rules Rules, and it was very encouraging to see that you could actually reinvent the uh, culture, and we did 
talked a lot about it in the work um, day one experience yesterday. So these were all part of part of who I am, who I'm uh, becoming. And I also tried to simplify the number of words that were in my word cloud as well. So I minimized it to, I think, just 10. Um, and these were the words that uh, came up and kept the photos. So food and uh, flowers continue to stay on. And then when I went into the next month, it continued to evolve, making a few changes here and there. I started um, keeping on photos, flowers, and then uh, expanding on if there were other organizations. So the Raleigh City Farm was one that I'd added at that point. And then in August of 2021, I took a complete pivot, if you will. I wanted to remove um, the butterfly representation and just have visuals. So it was a beautiful time in Raleigh in summer and I got to experience the sunflowers and the zinnias and the beautiful roses. So they became a center uh, attraction in my picture perfect. I continue to keep the organizations that I've been a part of. Um, at this point, I had removed what work was, uh, where I was working, uh, that was information that folks could get um, outside or they knew me through that. And then in November, 2021, I took it one step further where I wanted my story to be just core about who I am, what are my core values, visuals uh, that represented me at that point in time or that I captured. So I believe that I'm a moment capturer uh, or if that's a word, um, these were photos from Chicago and the fall colors and even flowers that continue to bloom. So we had dahlias and Japanese anemone um, that I continue to share in my picture perfect. So it evolved and I'll show you a glimpse again. So it evolved from all the organizations that I've been a part of to just pictures of places, flowers and uh, key interest areas to my core values. So I got simplified all the way and it made it in such a way that it had clarity and also gave me the uh, focus to just talk about a few things in my picture perfect. And this was November of 2021. So you'll see the progression over the time. And then in December of 2021, the uh, flowers uh, started uh, getting better and better. And I brought in a few more of the fall colors in. Um, we got to see a few more of the dahlias uh, in place. And then I also had self-published my first book, which was a broken teacup. And I wanted to bring that into my picture perfect. The duck image uh, was a photo from the Chicago waterfront. And what you're seeing in here is all the ducks are rowing in one direction. And there's one duck in the middle, if you can uh, squint and see, that's in the opposite direction. And I like to believe that that is me um, over the horizon, trying to look for new perspectives, trying to bring a new idea, a new concept into existence and also just challenging the status quo, challenging the norm and saying, why do we do the things we do that way? Um, are there other ways to think of it? Um, I'm right now reading a book called Thursday is the New Friday, which is definitely giving me a lot of ideas. And these are all concepts and ideas that are out there. It's just a matter of us to figure out who is it that we want to be and how do we want to tell our story outward? Fast forward to 2022, um, as you can see, I didn't make one for January, but in Feb 2022, I evolved it further. I actually created this one on Canva um, and wanted to give it an aesthetic presence. We had our first snow in um, Jan of 2022. So I was very excited. I was probably the kid down the street that uh, got to see the snow as if it was the first thing, uh, first time that I had seen it. Uh, the last time I'd seen snow was probably 10 years ago in Minneapolis. So um, definitely was a delight for me and I enjoyed capturing it. I actually share my curated travel videos uh, on uh, YouTube 
called Nowhere, which is basically a, a play with the words now here or nowhere. And I like to share my travel videos, my flower uh, captures, as well as food, um, being a true foodie. Um, I got to discover a really amazing uh, macaroon place here in uh, North Carolina and wanted to share that story. And then my picture perfect kept evolving. So what you saw today and this morning, it has taken one more step forward where my core value stayed there my um, themes and areas that I'm personally passionate about continue to be a smile, continue to be there. And then my books and the spring photography came into existence. And I also shared my website, devmanikam.us. So this is how a picture perfect comes into existence. I wanted to share this with all of you so you could see what it takes to go from an idea of telling a story to holding on to what's important to you. How do you see yourself and where do you want that um, perspective to be? So I hope this gave you a lens into how to think about it, um, how to bring some of these ideas to life and also give you a glimpse of what is it that you are trying to build? Um, what is the brand you're trying to build? Uh, think about your own personal uh, experiences. I think this is an important aspect. And then uh, make sure that you're telling the story that's true to you, right? Be you, be your authentic self. You don't need your story to hold on to things that don't feel true to you. So for me, work, um, all of those things that I had before, started slowly and slowly becoming less of what I felt I needed to hold on to, to actually define myself for my own identity. And I started simplifying what my identity is and who I am to be fully present in this moment in time. And that I think became my central um, experience with the Picture Perfect. So I wanted to share this with you. Let's actually take a few minutes now to build your own Picture Perfect. So. Let's switch on to the workshop um, and actually building some of this. So let's reconnect with our own selves and ask the question, who am I? How do I want to create my picture perfect? And let's do this in a picture perfect or less than picture perfect way. That's up to you how you want to define that. All right. So tell me a little bit about yourself. The first question to ask is, what exactly do you want to know about me? And it sounds like a simple question. Um, I've also included a link to the um, article that walks you through the steps and how to get to it. So let's take a few minutes and try to write down what are the things that make you you. And I'll come back in a few minutes. So let's get started.
So you took a few minutes to think about how would you answer the question, tell me about yourself. And if you're stuck and you're wondering, I have no idea where to start, let me give you a few guidelines. So where do you want to start? Think of this as different strokes, if you will, right? I have one starting point to my story and it can take different forms. There is no perfection. It's just about me in the moment or in the flow, if you will. It gives me an opportunity to not just think about how can I be perfect, but it also gives me an opportunity to be myself, even if that is being myself professionally. And there's some beauty in it. Um, I know oftentimes you're like, oh no, why would you say that uh, in a professional environment? I think now those lines are getting really blurred in a good way, because I think it's giving us an opportunity to be our authentic selves and actually open up um, to not feel like, oh, I'm not enough. Oh, I don't have everything. Um, look at the other people. They have so many things, they're doing so many things. And it doesn't matter at all. All that needs, it's, it just needs to be you. So whether you want to include work, which we touched upon, right? Your professional career, what got you to where you are today at, uh, professionally, whether you want to include education. Um, education can be anything and everything because as you know, we're all learning every day. And if you're not learning, then take a look at what you're spending when where you're spending your time. For me, learning is an important aspect. That's why I read books. That's why I listen to um, YouTube TED Talks because it's very inspiring and it teaches me a lot of things. Um, maybe travel. And I realized when I shared it with my teams across Dell, across Lenovo, I realized that a lot of what we have in common are we all love to travel. And um, we ended up sharing places and uh, locations that we all thought were amazing places to travel. And now we have all created shared bucket lists uh, because we all have similar interests. Maybe a little bit about family. And this was one that my Lenovo teams had actually inspired me because they had shared photos of their families. And I'd always struggled with defining family because I believe in a different uh, definition for family as compared to what we have in the society today. I believe in my communities. I believe in hobbies and creative outlets. Um, when winter had hit, uh, I knew that Raleigh, we wouldn't have snow um, because we, I didn't the year before. And I wanted to bring an element of snow into my home and into my apartment. So I actually created paper snowflakes. And uh, long behold, January, 2022, we actually did get three inches of snow. So I felt like I was welcoming um, snow in some way, but in my own creative way. As you can see, uh, my travel wall behind me is also another creative outlet for me. I love to capture, and these are all postcards of places that I've been. Um, I'm sending my love to people who are in Spain right now, um, uh, celebrating the World Happiness Week together. And someday I hope to be a part of that um, community in person. And then it's also a way for you to figure out um, what are the things that you like to do and how will you tell your story? doesn't mean that you need all of these boxes to be fixed, right? It's not a checkbox. It's a matter of figuring out how do you tell your story? Define perfect on your own terms. That's what we're looking to do. So create your own picture perfect introduction. I'll give you a few minutes and then I'll, we'll continue the conversation. All right, 
So did you get to think a little bit about where you are um, in terms of what do you want to include? Um, where do you thrive? Where are you your own self, right? Let's actually talk about where do you thrive? Now, when I looked at the word art and um, what I shared with you about your colleagues and maybe professionally and maybe even personally reach out to your true friends and family to see how they describe you. And all you need to ask for is for one word to describe you. And once you get a good collection of those responses, you will be able to create some of these in a word cloud. I was able to do that with the butterfly that I showed you. Um, this is asking the question, when are you your true self? And I realized that I loved collages. As a kid, I even make collages every day um, with the photos that I capture, the photos that I collect. My travel wall behind me is a form of a collage in some way. And I also realized that I like to keep things tidy and neat. Um, discipline, I think, is ingrained in me in some way, in a good way. And so when I made these collages, I was doing two things. The first is bringing collages to life um, and then realizing that I actually have an opportunity to shape how I tell my story. I have an opportunity to bring these facets, whether it's education, work, family, community, travel, all of that coming together. And this became a very fascinating observation for me because I realized how I was shaping my story, what I decided to keep and what I decided to not keep became a bigger part of who I am than I could have ever imagined. We're all trying to figure out things, trying to understand what our self-worth are. Um, today, we're talking about mental well-being, and it's important for us to take care of ourselves. Um, October of last year, 2021, was as I showed you my photos about Chicago and the waterfront, one story that I didn't tell you was I actually had my anxiety peak at that point um, and I had a blackout and I fell down and scarred my face and that became a part of my story. Um, I've shared that story with folks that I've connected with and I'm sharing that story with you today because it's a part of who I am and a part of why this book, A Broken Teacup came into existence because I realized that I was trying to question my self-worth. I was trying to question who I am, what do, what do I do, and why do I do what I do? Um, I will share a little bit uh, from this book because I think it's an important part of what I define as my true self. And the book cover became an element of my story because I was looking for bringing wabi-sabi and bringing the concept of kintsugi, which is uh, using your broken teacups and actually filling the cracks with gold. I wanted to bring that same analogy into my own life. So I'll read a little bit from my first chapter. This is uh, Meet the Council. At first, I thought there was only one inner voice, the one that challenged me every day in every decision. But now I see that as a council, not many, but many voices in its own way. Negative Nancy, always telling me what's wrong and not letting me focus on the positive. Worrisome Will, always worrying about the next thing or the next decision, and it would give me crickets in my stomach. This is when I would need to find the restroom condo because my stomach would get really upset. Overthinker Bob, always overanalyzing and trying to justify everything that I do. Sunday was another day, a tough one to get through. It's in the past now, but it's amazing how small triggers can wreck months of mindfulness. I realized I was getting overwhelmed with everything that's coming in the next few months. So I'm going to take it one step at a time. I cannot solve all the problems at once. So I need to take it one day at a time. And maybe that's all it is. One step, one moment, one day at a time. Constantly thinking about things in the future that I cannot control is not helping. And it's probably paralyzing me more than I can imagine. I needed to be careful about my inner circle and not let others words influence or impact me. So I sat down with my counsel and had a chat, an honest conversation of what's going on and why it's upsetting me. I guess the stress and anxiety was bubbling up and my stomach did its thing. Where it got really upset, I had to stop my walk and find a restroom pronto. I did feel helpless for a few minutes, but then I knew I could do it myself. It wouldn't be a big deal. I channeled in all the breathing techniques I learned to calm myself and it worked. I was not helpless anymore. 
Ruth's Magic Tricks, the one that I was talking to you about Into the Magic Shop book by Dr. Jane Story, was amazing. The mindfulness exercise, this magic. And that's my positive Pam. I know I got this. Not all big decisions need to be made at once. And I can see how things go. I don't need to rush it. I don't need to know all the answers today. Time will tell me what I need to know. And today is a beautiful day. I'm going to take it one day at a time. So this chapter, and especially this message here in the book, is all about happiness. And the reason why I wanted to read this for you is, I choose happiness one day at a time. Happiness is a choice. What's a challenge you have been faced recently and how can we turn this challenge into an opportunity? When we choose happiness, our state of mind will positively change our perception for good. It's crazy how the mind can move us, lift us or even throw us back on the ground. So this post-it note that I shared, is it making me happy now? Will it make me happy in the future? Is the reminder that I can be happy in the here and the now. And I love this quote by Thich Nhat Hanh. There is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. And so with that, let's continue talking about what it is to discover your own true self. And this discovery has been the Eureka moment because I realized I'm not hitting all the check boxes. I'm not trying to fill all the check boxes but it's about making sure it's who I want to be and how I want to be. And the best part of the book that I'm super excited is that it's in color because usually when I see books, they're all black and white. And I think this is also me challenging the, self, the publishing uh, arena in books and bringing color into our lives. So what's next? You've created your story. You have figured out what you want in that. You have actually asked the question, am I saying and sharing too much? Do I want to add more things or remove things in here? Be your authentic self. Include your personal and professional stories in a picture perfect way. You can leverage this in interviews. What would you like to share with the hiring manager? And what would be a good icebreaker from a traditional, typical interview format? I found it really valuable and I've had folks tell me that this was a great way to get to know each other from the traditional, tell me about yourself and you're giving yourself a two minute pitch and hoping that the person on the other end is listening to it. But if you have visuals, the images are going to tell a bigger story than the words that's coming out of your mouth. Networking events or presentations. Think about the audience when I First created my picture perfect, I knew I had a presentation at Cornell and I needed to connect with the audience and why am I the speaker that's actually in front of them and why they should listen to me for the next 45 minutes. So it's a great way to kind of uh, open up and also share a little bit about yourself. You can include motivational quotes as I had in the beginning. You can include pictures to tell a little bit about yourself a little more than just the job title or the company that you came from, which is all the information they know about you at that point in time. Your first meeting with your team. I loved it because it was a great way to build compassion with my team and share my own personal stories. Like I mentioned, we had an opportunity as part of a Lenovo um, team effort to create a video out of each of our picture perfects. And so we created a video loop as our team picture perfect introduction with 25 of us. And this is something that I will cherish for life because I got to know everybody at a different level than I would ever have. And knowing that all of us, all 25 of us would never be able to meet in person at one point in time, this was the best way for us to connect with each other. It brings pure joy when I see my mentees share their picture perfect. And I believe that there's real power in visually adding photos and telling the story ourselves. So these are books, 21 books that changed my life. And the reason why I wanted to share that with you is books are a big part of who I am and books will continue to be a big part of who I continue uh, to build to be. The book of Ichigo Ichi, The Art of Making the Most of Every Moment in the Japanese Way, has been more than inspirational because I started to realize what being in the moment means. The little book of Huga, 
Danish Secrets of Happy Living, Thich Nhat Hanh's The Miracle of Mindfulness. I still remember the first time I read, uh, I think it was an audio book that I was listening to. And I heard the concept of wash the dishes when you wash the dishes. And I realized that there was so much power in just those few words that to date, now I don't use the dishwasher and I actually wash the dishes one plate at a time. And it has some sort of therapeutic, I would say mindfulness um, attempt to help me stay in the moment and actually appreciate the meal that I had, appreciate the, the role that the dishes played in providing me that food. And it transformed into something much bigger than I could have ever imagined myself. I also like the example that he had about mindful eating where uh, in the book, Savor, these were all elements that made it more real to me. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl and the book Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life helped show me what my Ikigai is, what my meaning for this life is, what my purpose in this life is, and it helped me realize that my role is to help others, to bring the best in each other, and to actually smile and make sure that everybody around me is um, good and feeling happy. And that if they're not happy, they have somebody that they can talk to and feel comfortable about it. There's so much power in these books that I could easily spend a whole day talking about it. But let's keep going. The Untethered Soul. This book showed me that there's magic in the universe. The story of Michael A. Singer and how things would happen um, allowed me to believe that I should just go with the flow of the universe. And that actually helped me with my own anxiety because I, my anxiety would creep up because I didn't know what was coming or I would worry about things that I shouldn't be worrying about. Um, and when I read The Untethered Soul, it helped me connect with the universe in a way that I never had in my life. The Alchemist is one book that probably has followed me um, over time and time again. And yesterday uh, or through this week, as I was getting anxious about my trip to India, I realized I saw the good omens. Uh, the story talks about Urim and Tamim and about Maktou that it's written. And I realized that this became a part of my story that I, I am myself an alchemist bringing the magic of two worlds together, I, whether it's the different frameworks that I work with or just bringing um, different ideas and concepts from different um, perspectives. Green Lights uh, by Matthew McConaughey talks about your life and how you'll always have red lights and yellow lights, but the yellow lights will eventually turn green. And it's a beautiful story. He actually had a, one of his stories about um, being in the Amazon and actually seeing a dream about butterflies. And that's when I connected with the book because uh, the minute I hear butterflies anywhere, uh, you've definitely got me connected. Finding Sisu, it's about courage, strength and happiness, the Finnish way. And you'll see that happiness is not bound by a location, by a culture, by a country. We're all here trying to discover happiness in our own way. We're all here trying to find and share the pure joy of happiness. So those were some of the top books. Um, so let's keep going. The Happiness Diet is a book that talks about the nutrients and ingredients uh, that you need for your own happiness. Um, there is a lot of wisdom in the book, and I loved the idea of focusing on your happiness diet. Deep Work uh, by Cal Newport showed me what it means to be thinking about meaningful work and how you can actually have meaningful work in this distracted um, ecosystem where multitasking has taken off most of our lives. The Courage to be Happy and the similar book from the same authors on the courage to be disliked gives me the courage to be happy in my own way and not really worry about what others would think um, and find my own space. I've met so many people just because of 
the conversations I've had from the books that I've read and actually built some really deep uh, connections. The things you can see only when you slow down by Hanim Samim has been a, a brilliant book to think about the concept of slowing down in this fast paced world. I moved from San Francisco to Raleigh in 2020 and I realized that I was on a constant chase, chasing something or somewhere or to be somewhere. And I realized that that was not doing any good for me, my mind or my body and my soul. And so when I started to slow down, I actually noticed the squirrels around, uh, the, around Raleigh and I noticed what environments are around me. I noticed people around me, we go for a morning walk and I'm smiling and I'm wishing folks good morning. It's a, it's a moment of joy. When you start your day that way, then you know your rest of your day is going to be good. Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell actually showed me what it means to be an outlier, to create your own story of success. Um, I'm also grateful to Malcolm Gladwell for his uh, writing um, workshop masterclass that he has. The Book of Joy by Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu, just looking at them probably gives, brings a smile to your, whether you're smiling internally or externally. And it's been a delight just reading that book itself. Beth Campton's Wabi Sabi, um, talking about the concepts of a perfectly imperfect life has also been very true to me. Into the Magic Shop by Dr. James Doty that I'd mentioned, um, uh, a story of pure vision, a story of bringing an idea. And when I had shared about the book uh, that I was writing about a broken teacup, the message that I'd got was manifested and it truly manifested itself. At first, I didn't um, know how to take a, an idea into a book. And then I didn't know how to get it published to figure out self-publishing. And all of that happened in the past few months it, in its own way it was manifested and now I feel like the book has taken a life of its own because I didn't know what it would take for me to actually have uh, a paperback option for the books but now I do have an actual paperback option for the book and this has been more than rewarding and I feel like the book has a life of its own at this point. Jonathan Livingstone Siegel is one of the books that I've first read um, when I barely used to read and this book also showed me that you can challenge the norm and not just assume that the way we do things is the way it's always going to be. And so I started becoming the one asking uh, questions on why it is. And Simon Sinek, Start With Why, probably inspired me to think about new perspectives and bring new ideas to life. The Artist Way uh, taught me a lot more about creativity and how to connect your uh, inner soul to creativity. And Adam Smiley Polowski's The Quarter Life Breakthrough was definitely a book of breakthrough. And the time in 2021, when I was going through my own breakthrough, um, he had a message in the book where he talked about the story that you have to tell, no matter how many times you think somebody has already told that story, your story is yours to tell. And it's your unique one to tell. So I realized there was power in that. And I wanted to take that opportunity to create my story and publish my own books. So these were my 21 books that changed my life. I would love to hear which books changed your life. What are the ones that actually made you think and actually ask what's next? Where do you want to go? How is your picture perfect evolving? I will continue to keep um, updating the uh, article that I shared with all of you on what my picture perfect is and looking at what that opportunity is going forward. Thank you, gracias. Um, I would love to connect with you. Uh, you can reach me on LinkedIn. You can also find me on Substack where I share my um, frameworks, my experiences on pursuit of happiness, stress and anxiety, mindfulness and essentialism, authentic leadership, product marketing. All of these things shape who I am and who I uh, see myself in the future. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. 
and a great conversation going forward. Thank you so much for your time today. And I would love to take any questions or answers, um, anything that you would like to know. Thank you.